This is Joel the Red Cap, or as better known as... Hey you! <laughs> so Pennsylvania's got some funny names for some towns, but this one is Paradise. And so this train actually goes to Paradise. You know, before we get started on today's adventures, one of the things I wanted to say was that, uh, you know, if you haven't gotten your Neighbor Rich shirt yet, uh, this one right here with the back of a C7 uh, trending, I hope that you do. Uh, there's no question that uh, the website at www.inchaindesigns.com has hundreds and hundreds of products, all kinds of things that you can get. And at the same time, you get entered to win a, a really exciting vehicle. So I hope that you'll uh, visit the website and you'll get something, pick something up. If it's not a neighbor rich shirt, which, you know, obviously is my personal favorite, um, you get something that is really, really cool and something that you're going to like. And at the same time, you know, you get entered to, uh, to win a vehicle. And the the thing is that, you know, honestly, I mean, it's better than playing a lottery. You've got way better odds and it could be life changing. So I hope that you enter and I'll see you soon. Hi, Neighbor Rich here. Welcome to the channel. Today on the exciting adventures of Neighbor Rich, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. And again, um, you know, there's that saying, nothing is as constant as change. You can see it's kind of cloudy overcast. Uh, there is a hurricane and my heart goes out and my thoughts and prayers to, you know, the people of Florida, you know, South Carolina, uh, that are getting really whacked with this uh, hurricane. But uh, it did make a difference for what I was planning to do. <laughs> so instead of uh, taking out my Z06, I thought I'd do something a little more local and have a little fun with something else. You know, honestly, one of my mottos is, you know, have a little fun every day. Do something every day that makes you happy. And uh, there's no question, this is going to make me happy. We're going to be traveling to uh, a, a local place here in Lancaster, uh, Pennsylvania. Because they've got a lot of exciting things here in uh, central Pennsylvania. But one of the things is the Strasburg Railroad. And uh, we've got Joel here. One of the things. One of the We're things. One of the main the things. The main things. <laughs> so this is Joel the Red Cap, or as better known as... Hey you! <laughs> so tell me what's going on here. I mean, well, this looks awesome. All, I used to be a school teacher. So okay. I'm yeah. Look, at, I mean, this is just such an awesome place, and you've got so many cool things. You're kind of decorated for the um, for upcoming Halloween, Halloween. and yeah. uh, getting a little scary here. But you know, uh, but anyhow, tell me, you've been here what ten years? And uh, ten years. Okay. And what and do they have? Well, we are the oldest continuously operating railroad company in the country. Yep, 1832. 1832. So the first documentary evidence uh -huh. we have of an active rail service on this right-of-way was from 1852 in a local newspaper, the Strasburg Bee. Wow. But the, the line, it was chartered in 32, just like you said. But it took us a while to rail to raise the capital, survey the line, grade it, lay the, the roadway and the, the all the ballast yep. stone and the cross ties and the rail. So that was all ready to go in 1851. Yep, and all steam engines at that point. Yes. <laughs> now we think there's the possibility okay. in those earliest days yeah. that some of our trains might have been horse drawn horse-drawn horse trains drawn. wow now, that's tough to imagine yeah would when, it be like six horsepower maybe <laughs> well when when you take a look at our equipment now yeah this all dates from between 1896 and 1913 so okay. don't don't imagine for a moment that any equipment like this could ever have been horse-drawn right it wasn't. right 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 but in the earliest days of railroad and this is true maybe not of our line but of the philadelphia and columbia whose line has been taken over and now is all part of the amtrak high-speed corridor through pennsylvania that line predates us by a few years now they're long since defunct yeah so even though they're the philadelphia and columbia even though they were a few years older than we are we outlasted them yeah. by two generations at least already. Yeah. So, as I say, our distinction, we're not the oldest railroad company in the country, but of those early ones, we're the only, only one that's survivor. left. All the others <laughs> were, went bankrupt or were swallowed up by other long-distance yep. lines. Yep. But back in the early days of horse-drawn railroading, wow. that's when a passenger coach 
think no more than the size and weight of a stagecoach. Yeah, That's sure. That's how big it used to be. Actually pulled on the rails. But on rails. Yeah. Wow, that is that is so cool. Thanks so much for the history and oh, spending a little time with me. And now I'm excited about seeing this train come in the station. Oh, <laughs> you are just about to enjoy the best part is only beginning. When you take a look at these older trains, you know, they go by uh, the actual wheels. So this is a 480, which is a very interesting uh, wheel uh, combination for this train. But this is an old steam engine coming into the station right now. And the thing that's kind of cool about this is that um you know this is actually the way the trains were this is how they pulled and this is what you saw coming at you the old north smoke western So as you can see, the train can pull quite a quite a load, and uh, all these people just took a tour. Where they take them is kind of interesting. Um, there's a town in Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania's got some funny names for some towns, but this one is Paradise. And so this train actually goes to Paradise. And so these folks are actually just back from Paradise. <laughs> What they're doing right now because the train just pulled in but obviously it's got to pull the other direction so they're actually cutting it away right now and uh turn it turn it around so they can pull it going the opposite opposite direction and of course they've got a lot of uh one horse um vehicles here as well here in the heart of the amish country <laughs> You know, this, this, this is so cool. We have actually here a couple of brakemen. It's uh, Eric and Ben. How you guys doing, man? Good, how are you? Oh, you're, and you're the conductor. I am today, yes. Oh, what you are today, you? huh? That's yeah. exciting. Is that an upgrade? You get a bigger pay or? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so either. <laughs> so anyhow, how long have you guys been doing this? This is so cool to be here part of the railroad. Uh, I've been here for a year, but I only started brakeman training three months ago. Okay, very good. I'm here seven years. Seven years. Well, that's awesome, guys. Well, anyhow, this is really a cool experience. And honestly, if you get to the Central Pennsylvania area, I hope you'll stop by and see Ben and Eric. Yes, sir. Take care, guys. Yeah. Take care easy. Yeah. Actually pulled in a, um, a waiting station, and they were going to tear it down. It was part of the Reading Railroad. And then they pulled it here. In and 1960 and nailed the thing 1960 all back nailed it all back together but this would have been what your waiting room would have been like there would have been a pot belly stove and it would have kept you warm in the winter absolutely and uh you would have been able to sit on these benches in these seats and, and uh, if you had to wait for a while and you needed the facilities well that was right out back that little octagonal building? Uh, yeah, uh, we, we, we know what those things are. Now, we use that for storage now, but that was what that was it, huh? That was the necessary. The necessary. <laughs> and directly across the street from the Strasburg Railroad is uh, actually the Pennsylvania Rail Museum. And uh, They've got a lot of exciting trains. There's over a hundred trains inside this huge, huge museum and building right behind me. Uh, let's walk inside and see what we can find out. So as you look at this train museum and you see the different trains, you go everything from steam trains, uh, which were, you know, some of the originals. Of course, as we learned, um, the horse-drawn trains were really the, probably the first, but this was the John Bull. And uh, you can see it was a big steam engine um, pulled a little car uh, and the thing that's nice about this museum and this is again uh, just over a hundred trains in this museum but um, you see everything from a more recent Conrail diesel uh, to a diesel electric to different electric trains and um, it's just really really neat to be able to see this part of history and learn a little bit about some of the things that actually tied this nation together this was actually the very first cow catcher uh, that was put in place. Uh, as you can imagine, you know, cows would wander across the tracks and uh, you didn't want to necessarily kill them. Uh, so these 
pushers would just actually just kind of nudge them out of the way very nicely <laughs> but you know one of the interesting things is that the the rails themselves were um four feet eight and a half inches apart and you know i don't think anybody really knows why trains are such a huge part of american history and definitely change lives uh, people that were trying to get from the east coast to the west coast or around in the country moving goods um, they went by train and that was really the the main way to get things going and it's still a huge part of the economy and the american um lifestyle well that'll pretty much do it for this episode of neighbor rich i hope you enjoyed this upload if you did please give it a big thumbs up and and if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe to the channel i really appreciate it and uh one thing is i always like to leave you with something positive and and that is that you know honestly with hurricanes and with the things that are going on right now you know tough times come but you know they don't last uh we get through them and there are brighter days ahead this is neighbor rich i hope you enjoyed this upload take care and we'll see you in the next one